Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream, and it's a glorious day outside. We're going to get out here in a second. I've been riding on a daydream. Uh, it's been in the 80s for the last few days, and we haven't been doing much for videos because I've been kind of busy, and we'll talk, try to talk about everything that I've done, and uh, I'll show you a few things. Uh, we just got a delivery, though, of uh, some of my son's parts for his van. Um, we'll be doing... A complete series on that van build as it happens and don't expect anything real elaborate going on there basically we're just preparing it so it fits the category of what's considered an RV for a lot of these like work camping jobs again we'll go over this in more detail but this is a winter refrigerator I checked all the reviews compare it to the Dometic and uh, this is a 42 quart 45 quart sorry 45 quart it's really nice. It's about 60 pounds. It runs on, uh, of course, uh, 12 volt, 24 volt, or of course AC. And it's uh, you know it's an intelligent refrigerator freezer. You can either run it as a freezer or a refrigerator. And there's the display. And uh, yeah, it's just really cool. It's it's set up kind of nice. Let's talk about why I haven't been doing much for videos. I've been wanting to do videos, but. Uh, we just got real busy now on the Suns van again I did some work on that and that's going to be on the other series so whatever filming I did for that uh, isn't going to go down in this video necessarily but yeah I put a, a dual battery isolator I had to fix that turn signal got rid of the luggage rack took the propane tank that was mounted off uh, that you know was midship of that van and um, the ladder off the back uh, we're waiting for a fan to come in, the ceiling fan, whatever you want to call it, to replace that vent fan that's already up there. Um, even though it's a fantastic fan, I found a crack in it, so uh, he's going to get something that's a little bit more streamlined. It was expensive. It's like $160, $170, but it's really nice. It's more flush mount. We'll look a little bit better for that van. We're still going on our trip. Heidi's been at the hospital with her dad and her mom quite a bit, and her dad's doing on and off. Uh, doesn't look like he's ever going to come home though. He's probably going to go right into some sort of a rehab care and then probably maybe a nursing facility after that. Uh, you know, it's sad. It just happens. Um, and they're dealing with it pretty well. Uh, we're, we'll have to see how that works out. But Heidi, she's been taking a lot of time off of work because of it. But, you know, it's under uh, her sick time. And I mean, she had 240 hours accumulated of sick time. And it, it doesn't... And once it gets to 240 hours, it stops. It, you can't keep on adding hours to it. You earn for the hours that you work. Well, to give you an idea how little time she calls off, um, she has 240 hours sick time, and she has had that 240 hours sick time banked for the last 10 years. So she earned her sick time, and she's only used a couple days that I can really recall. And of course, all the hours that she works, she gets it right back again. So she's starting to use some of that sick time and something to do with Family Medical Leave Act. Uh, she filled out the paperwork for that just in case, just to protect her job. Um, so uh, they've been doing that and I've been trying to keep busy here at the house getting stuff ready. Now what do I need to do still? Um, I need to pull the wheels and tires off of the RV, check the bearings and uh, adjust the brakes because I haven't adjusted the brakes since I got it and the bearing should be okay but we're going to uh, still check into that um, I had a problem that I was looking for inside the RV which I decided just isn't an issue uh, the pump even though it's brand new randomly cycles that's what the old one did and I can't find a leak anywhere I'm telling you there is no leak uh, so some reason uh, the pressure might be just migrating back into the tank a little bit and then it repressurizes itself uh, because there is no leak. There is no water loss anywhere. I don't care how minor it is. I even replaced uh, the uh, blow-off valve for the hot water tank just in case because occasionally we would get a drip from it and that's not it either. Um, so that was $25 spent for no reason. But yeah, we're we're preparing. We're getting ready. Um, I'm going to pull all the Reflectix out of the window. Uh, we went ahead and marked the Reflectix so we know what window it goes in. Heidi did a great job putting that up. Uh, with all the uh, little Velcro pieces for it to be held, uh, you know, perfect. Um, I don't think we're going to transport the RV with it up in the windows. Her and I thought it looked kind of tacky. Um, we'll go through, walk around. You can tell us what you guys think down in the comments. Tell us if it looks stupid, <laughs> if it looks like uh, some sort of a drug lab, a rolling drug lab. 
<laughs> that's what I kind of think that it looks like. Uh, as far as the truck's concerned, I need to get the uh, tires rotated and I need to possibly get a front end alignment. I, I'm still 50-50 on that. I'm not sure. If I could find a place that say, yeah, I can fit you in today for sure if you just want to wait, um, I would do that. But most of these places want an appointment. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do, even though it's not time, uh, I'm going to do an oil change. Uh, it's something I got to be, you know, thinking about because uh, if I'm halfway through the trip, my oil change will be due. And even though I put synthetic in, I still change around 3,000, 3,500 miles. I've gone as long as 4,000 miles. But whenever you get a vehicle, you know, like in this case, it's got 170,000 miles on the engine. I'd really like to, you know, keep the oil changed a little bit sooner than later. And of course, I'm running full synthetic uh, with Lucas Additive too. Uh, so I want to start off my trip with fresh uh, synthetic and fresh Lucas in there. So I know everything should go pretty well. Um, hopefully, no uh, no problems. Now, in anticipation, if there is a problem, Heidi and I went ahead and signed up for Good Sam Roadside Assistance. I don't know how that's going to work out. I've heard mixed reviews. Uh, I heard some people say it's okay. Some people said it's not. Uh, let's hope we don't have to use it. And we also joined Good Sam Club. They had some sort of introductory offer that for one year uh, we could have both of those, Roadside Assistance and the Good Sam Club, which offers discounts at you know Good Sam participating campgrounds and camping world um, and of course discounted fuel at Pilot and Flying J. Uh, we're gonna see how that works out uh, when we're on this trip and it was only seventy dollars for both of those for one year's membership. Uh, it's worth it. I mean if I can get a tow out of it you know the tow is gonna be worth you know a lot more than seventy dollars or cost a lot more than seventy dollars so we'll try it out. So far their customer service eh, isn't the best. I, I made a phone call in for a membership number and uh, I don't know just unprofessional I guess they answered the phone with their name they didn't say who they were for and they you know put me on hold right away and I don't know just I'm used to better customer service because I used to be in customer service for years and used to have employees that you know I had to keep within a certain amount of standards and and I would have never let them do what they did but still, it may be acceptable to you, and they did answer the phone, so it's not so much of a deal. At least they have a phone number, at least they called an answer, and at least I got an answer. Uh, so it worked out, I guess, overall. So as far as uh, the truck and the RV, I got some work to do on it. Um, the van, I'm not gonna mess with, my son's van, because I don't have time. My car, the transmission, we just parked it. Uh, I'll wait till I come back. I'll take it to a shop and have them look at it and see what they think. Uh, hopefully I can find some place that'll patch it for relatively cheap. Um, because it's a good car. We like the way that it rides. The garage is a disaster uh, because I was doing so much work and we've got a bunch of stuff laying around. Oh, let me show you my son's propane tank. This is that onboard propane tank. You can see it's just like any other RV propane tank. Um, we thought about leaving it on there, but he's worried about things. Uh, you know, it's, it's old and, you know, I remember watching... Um, uh, adventure van man Brian and his van and he went into an area of the desert in which their vans barely cleared their rockers I'm talking about the area between the wheels so from the front wheel to the back wheel there was uh, limited clearance for them to go over this rise this would have caught on that for sure matter of fact this guy has a, a mud flap that has been put on here uh, since they installed this tank back in the 80s. <laughs> uh, but the tank's still good. It still has uh, three quarters of a, a fill of propane in it. The gauge still reads and the propane comes out just fine. Um, I need to go get our propane tanks filled. Um, I did use the last of that one rusty propane tank. That's the one that's bright white. I went ahead and painted it. Um, I used the last of that with the uh, generator the other day when I was looking for that water leak. I had the bed tore apart and the couch tore apart and it was hot in there. Um, I don't mind it being really hot but I don't like being confined and hot especially in an area that captures all my smell. So let's talk about this RV and the way it looks. First of all it needs wash and wax. Um, I'm thinking about doing something here to make this look better for our trip because that's crappy and I don't know if I'm going to put the flagpole back up again. Uh, as far as this Reflectix though, like I said, it kind of reminds me of some sort of rolling meth lab that you can just kind of get a sense when you're looking at it of whoever's inside there don't want you to see what's inside there. And that's a little scary to me. Um, 
we're not in a you know the desert if this was the desert or if we were in florida this would seem kind of normal to see this you know because it's keeping heat out but um yeah this this looks too much like uh breaking bad to me <laughs> that is our preparation so far for the trip um me talking about everything that needs to be done so i need to get to work today we have storms coming in and again we're at 86 degrees right now and it feels comfortable i like it um I, again, I could do with a little bit more humidity, um, but uh, I do enjoy the breeze, and it, it's kind of nice. Uh, as far as where we're going to go on a trip, we're not 100% sure. Depends on where storms form. Uh, we figured that we would try to chase some nice weather. Um, our initial plans are still going down the coast. I don't know if that's going to be the case. Um, I did meet up with an Army buddy that uh, I haven't seen in 30 years. Uh, last time I saw him, I was 21 and he was 23, and uh, we met up over in uh, Akron area, and he uh, actually, he actually, once we got out of the service, moved to my hometown birthplace, and he's been there ever since. Uh, so he invited us to come down. He said he had a couple acres. He said we could drop our RV off, plug in, and use that as a base camp if we wanted to, to uh, go visit all my relatives. Uh, we might take him up on that. I don't know if we're going to get down that far. We're not sure. We're just not sure what we're going to do. But if you guys want to keep track of us, I'm going to try this out. I don't know how well it's going to work. Uh, I will put the link in the description uh, for our next video or one of our videos coming up here. And that link is going to be where we are traveling. And it's going to basically allow you to follow us on Google Maps wherever we go. Again, I don't know how this is going to work out. Uh, and I, I've tried it, I've tested it out, you know, with Heidi and I, and it works pretty well. There is some delay sometimes, and of course we're going to have to where we lose signal and gain signal. I don't know how much it's going to eat up on any of my data, but uh, I don't think that it will. I don't think it's going to be that bad. We'll try it out. We'll, we'll see what happens. And also we're considering uh, doing maybe some live updates, either on YouTube or on Facebook or maybe both. Uh, I know that there's a way that I could do live streaming with this camera uh, using Ustream, but that doesn't do you guys any good unless you want to go to that website and watch it on Ustream. Um, that's not really what I want to do because I wish this camera would hook up to YouTube or Facebook. I would be doing live streaming all the time. And you know that live streaming, I haven't really found a, a, an actual need for it yet. Um, I mean, it's nice. and. I like that it's raw uh, because a lot of my videos are kind of raw, but still, I don't know if it's something I want to do. Well, we'll see what happens. That's that's on down the road. We got about a week to go, and then we'll be out on the road for quite some time. Uh, my daughter will come. She's going to house sit for us and uh, also dog sit for us since we still watch the dog for uh, Heidi's mom. And of course, uh, for safety reasons, she'll she'll be able to sleep here and hang out here, and her boyfriend will show up occasionally and. Uh, you know, we got a lot of amenities here that they can take advantage of uh, instead of, you know, them being in a small apartment. But that's it, guys. That's my update for now. And as always, I hope to see you out there. Bye.